Okay, let's take a look at the examples for the third angle theorem. Example A asks us to make, determine the measure of the missing angles. And remember the sort of the key thing we're working on here is the fact that all triangles equal 180 degrees. And that tells us that if two angles are congruent on two triangles, then the third angle must be because it still has to total 180 degrees. So if we take a look at our two triangles here, ABC, angle A is congruent to angle D, which means that angle A must also be 42 degrees, just like angle D is. And angle B is congruent to angle E, which tells us that angle E must also be 83 degrees, just like angle B is. And now that we know that angle A and B are 42 and 83, we know that 42 plus 83 plus whatever angle C is must be 180 degrees. So we just subtract 42 plus 83, which is 125, from 180. So this goes away, and we get C equals 180 minus 125, which would be 55 degrees. So that tells us that angle C must be 55 degrees. Now we know, of course, that since these two other angles are congruent, angle F must also be 55 degrees. But we can verify that by doing the same thing we did before. 180 degrees has to be the total of angles F, E, and D. So it must be 83 degrees plus 42 degrees plus angle F. And obviously that's going to be the case because we just did the math on the other side. So let's take a look at example B. Example B asks us to explain why the third angle theorem works. Uh, we did a little bit of this in the discussion at the beginning of the lesson, um, and really it's just sort of an extension of the angle, the triangle sum theorem, because if we know that a triangle has two angles, and those two angles have some given measurement, if we say these are each 45 degrees, since the three angles of a triangle always have to equal 180 degrees, this third angle over here is sort of specified, it's fixed. It can't be anything other than whatever one measurement is the remainder of 180 minus these two degrees. So if I take 180 degrees, which is what the whole triangle has to be, and I subtract both of those 45s, I'm going to get 90 degrees. And that means that this angle down here is fixed at 90 degrees. It can't be anything else because if it was any other angle, the total of the triangle wouldn't be 180 degrees. That's why the third angle theorem works because there's only one angle that will total 180 degrees if we're already given the other two. Let's take a look at example C. Example C asks us to determine the measure of all angles in the triangle. So we're going to see which angles we have information about. Now the first thing I'm going to note here that I think is kind of important is that this top side, side AB, is parallel to side CD or DC because we have this little parallel lines notation here that also tells us that BC is parallel to AD because they have the same notation, in this case a double hash mark. Now because of that, that means that our red line right here, AC, is a transversal of two parallel lines. Those parallel lines are the ones we just talked about. That means that altern alternate interior angles are going to be equal. So if this angle down here at C is 15 degrees as it's marked, that must be that this angle up here, which is its alternate interior angle, must also be 15 degrees. And if 153 degrees right here is this sort of upper right angle, then the corresponding angle down here must also be 153 degrees. So that means that for each of these two triangles, ADC and ABC, we have two of the three angles. We know that they both have one angle that's 153 degrees and one angle that's 15 degrees. This one 153 here and 15 here. So we know that both of those triangles must be 15 degrees plus 153 degrees plus something else. 
is equal to 180. So we just need to subtract that. 153 plus 15 is 168. So 180 degrees minus 168 degrees is going to be that missing angle. So that missing angle must be 12 degrees. So the missing angle on both triangles here and here must be 12 degrees. That's all there is to it.